Okay. So this meeting is being recorded now. Um, so uh, this is about Excelitics. Uh, to put it in a nutshell, I know like all these things are uh, things we put it in a presentation to highlight our competencies, but then uh, to put it in a nutshell, right? Uh, whenever an analyst or a person wants to understand a particular skill, right? So what you typically do is you research through internet. There would be a few trainings that is available to you. So you will learn it and then um, you will have the basics, right? So that is one. And then there is the organization's expectations, right? Say you research yourself and you learn few things. But when you enter into an organization, when you're supposed to do something in an organization, there are the expectations is completely different, right? So most of us who have uh, self-trained ourselves would be able to relate this to that. But then uh, the things which you learn through research and uh, through online, uh, um, online groundwork, right? So that is, that is not entirely enough to meet the organization's expectations. You would have learned something and then when an organization puts you, when in your company, when they give you a challenge, right? How to address it and approach it is going to be a completely different ball game. So Excelitics plays a major role in bridging this gap. What Excelitics does is an analyst's interest and uh, their skills, it helps nourish and improve to meet the challenges that your organization is going to provide in the future. So that is what Excelitics does in a does in a nutshell. So moving forward, uh, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, me. My name is Punshankar Palaniwel, and I've been in the data analytics field for more than eight years now. And uh, throughout my career, I've been associated with the different organizations trying to solve their data-related problems. And over a period of time, I've also added a lot of skill sets to my uh, belt. So what you see here is some of the skill sets which I've highlighted. I have expertise in Tableau, business intelligence, data visualization, machine learning, data science, data integration, social media analytics, and data modeling. So these are some of the areas which I have worked on and I have created solutions that could be used for business to solve their business problems. So that is where my expertise lives. Uh, and then I'm also a strong believer of sh um, sharing is more important than learning, right? So you learn something and we all are in an open source community right now. We are, we are in an open source world. So whichever software you wanted to contribute, if you wanted to uh, move into data science, if you wanted to do a lot of things into analytics, we know like uh, knowledge sharing and uh, uh, giving your code for open source is becoming the trend, right? Because the world believes in sh sharing their knowledge so that it could be used for a better perspective. So I believe in that a lot. And then these, this is my professional Twitter handle and my LinkedIn account. So uh, I, what I do is I do a lot of, uh, I write articles, I uh, publish articles, and then I also uh, do some uh, videos in YouTube to uh, give a brief about what is in the top demand in the current industry and a few things about how to do it, like um, things about data science, um, how to do, social media analytics, how to do uh, a few basic things which you guys will enjoy. So uh, so there is also a YouTube uh, channel which I've, uh, I've been putting together and you might some, uh, find some really good videos there. So uh, this is my profile and then uh, I would be like happy to help you guys um, go through the learning curve which I went through in a little more faster pace. Right. So obviously I would have, um, when I've been um, coming through this journey, right, so I I had my learning curve, curve right. So uh, the purpose of this is to make you guys go through that learning curve faster. Okay, so participation certificate. I know like Excelity sort of communicated uh, um, the terms and conditions for getting this particip participation certificate in this 
workshop but then i just wanted to remind you guys again so to get the participation certificate uh, you guys will have to attend full session and i hope like i will make it interesting enough to make you guys attend this full session and then uh, feedback i believe um, excelatics would be sharing you uh, a review a feedback review and then you should be able to uh, fill that and give it back to me um, so that is one other condition yeah and then the links um, can be shared anytime during the session so uh, the e-certificate which is the participation certificate would be given to you guys through email right so uh, it is automatic and then if you have any questions you can uh, contact this number just to guys, uh, um, just to give a brief about how the certification would look. This is how the certification would look with obviously your name there. So uh, I hope like um, it is clear uh, about the terms and conditions that is required for the certification, right? And uh, Divya, who's here, uh, would be coordinating in this session so uh, if you guys have any doubts i know like she is pinging a few instructions there so that please follow up with her okay let me move forward let me talk about what we are going to see here the basic agenda of what we would be discussing in this session we would be going through a brief introduction of business intelligence first then we would be trying to understand why tableau Right, so there are many BI tools which obviously you guys would have uh, heard. So why why necessarily Tableau? So that is what we would be looking at, and then we would be having a uh, giving a brief introduction of Tableau, and then we will be discussing Excel versus Tableau. I think this is uh, Excel versus Tableau would have been a quite interesting topic for you, all you guys because in most of the companies today, what is happening is uh, that a transition is happening from Excel to Tableau. So it could be interesting for you guys to understand why exactly the transition is happening, right? And then we will be getting started with Tableau. We will create our first visualization and then we will come back and we will see what is pre-attentive attributes and how does it play a vital role in data visualization, right? And then we would be looking at the next steps. So this is, this is what our agenda is going to be. And then let's discuss about few things uh, like how we will go forward with this course. Uh, we will initially have topic discussions, which will be mostly understanding the concepts and the background of a particular topic. Then we will do some practical sessions. Uh, I know like the a number of participants um, in this uh, workshop is huge. So uh, working, doing a working session is not something that is feasible. So what I would, we would be doing is I will be um, practically doing it and showing to, you, uh, showing to you guys in my own pace. And then uh, this workshop, which you guys seeing uh, would be recorded and Excelitics has a YouTube uh, page and uh, this videos would be posted in YouTube. And then uh, you guys can, uh, can probably, whoever is able to follow through with me can follow through and understand the, from a knowledge perspective, what needs to be done. And then you can go back and look at the YouTube video and you can recreate what I just, uh, what I just do in this session. Okay. So they, I know like, uh, since the number of participants are more, I will have, I, I had muted all, all of you guys, which is, uh, believe me, it's not intentional. So uh, we will have a two minutes query time uh, during when you can ask your questions in chat and I will try uh, my best to uh, resolve it for you guys or give a brief introduction, brief explanation for that. If the questions are uh, uh, something that needs to be addressed later, then we can. Uh, okay, so I, I'm seeing a chat which says not audible. Uh, are you guys able to clear hear me clearly? Okay, awesome, awesome. So I think uh, whoever has Sharav Patel, right? So uh, 
there should be some, some issue on your side, so please check. Okay, thank you for the responses, guys. Uh, so, two minutes query time, right? So, uh, which during when you can ask your questions and we will try our best to address it. If not, you guys can uh, forward your queries to Excelitics and uh, they would like get in touch with me and I can help you guys offline. Fine. So next we will have, I'm sorry, there is one 15 minutes break. I've kind of forget to change it in the middle of the session. So uh, we will take a 15 minutes break and then we will come back, right? And then uh, the links for all the resources. So I said like we are doing practical uh, things, right? So practical sessions. Uh, so sorry to be interrupted, but then there are few uh, people who are saying like that my voice is not audible, but then uh, it is audible to everyone else. So might be there is some issue with your Zoom session, guys. So try uh, logging in again or disconnect from the audio and see what is wrong with the audio because it is it is clear for everyone else. Okay, so um, the links, yeah. So uh, we would be using few external data that would be analyzed in this session. And then the links for these sessions would be uh, are provided to you guys. Either I will provide it in the chat window right away or else also like uh, you will be um, reached through emails to kind of uh, give all those things, right? So this is what it is and they, I'm sorry. Okay, so we will go through a small activity, right? So what I'm going to show you guys is somewhat familiar topic, but then uh, don't expect the latest information here because uh, the data which I've taken is uh, three weeks old. So I'm going to show you country in column. Okay, let me see how I can highlight this. I'm going to show you a data that has country in column like this and number of corona cases beside. So you will be seeing two columns, right? One co first column is column and the second column is the number of corona cases, okay? So what I want you guys to uh, tell me is, what we will be seeing is top 20 countries. What I want you guys to tell me is, not obviously the top three countries because most of you uh, would have a guess on that, I wanted to tell you guys the bottom three countries. So once I click, you would be able to see the data and just see like, can you pick the bottom three countries in three seconds, right? I will tell you guys why three seconds, but then let's give it a try, okay? Let's start. Three, two, one. Okay. I know like even I was not able to spot the uh, last three uh, countries. So uh, I, I don't expect you guys also would have uh, to spot it. So just a spot check. I see like a lot of blinking happening just to make sure like uh, you guys are not facing issues. Okay, I'm going to data not visible. Guys, uh, I wanted to kind of give you the data a little later. Is everything okay now? Okay. Um, okay, there are a few set of participants. Okay, guys, uh, who are able to see the uh, activities, like uh, very able to see the data? I'm seeing no and SS. Okay. Uh, okay. Now the data is not visible because we are in the second part of the activity, guys. So now what I wanted to do is the same data which you saw on the table, it is going to reappear in a in a graphical format. And I wanted to wanted you guys to tell me the same bottom three, right? Okay. Three, two, one. So were you guys able to see the bottom three countries? Yeah, it, it, the text is changed into graphical format, but then we were not able to understand exactly what the three 
bottom countries are. Now let's look at this. Three, two, one. We have enough time to just see exactly where we wanted to see, right? This is bottom sorted out. And you guys can easily see like South Africa, Bangladesh and Saudi Arabia are the bottom three countries, right? So uh, what we understand from this, right? Be, be it Excel or be it uh, any other tool that you guys use for your visualization, it is very important how you convey the visualization to the users, right? So uh, think about this, right? Um, any user who comes into a dashboard which you guys have created, we will have just few seconds to have a look at the dashboard. Say you guys are creating a dashboard for the top level management. Say a VP or, um, or a director who wants to see an overview about how data is appearing. So do you think those guys will come in and see the tabular format which you guys have? All they wanted to do is in few seconds, they wanted to understand where is the highest impact and where is the lowest impact. So for you to give them that, the visualization which you would be putting together needs to be like this, needs to convey exactly what needs to be conveyed in the first three seconds, because that is the window you have for attracting the users or for bringing together the users to your dashboard. And the, it is not only important for anyone just to learn creating a Tableau dashboard alone, it is very important for your dashboard to be used widely in your organization, right? That is when your dashboard will be a value addition and that is when you will be getting your value, right? So that is the purpose of this activity. I know like you guys were saying like the data is not visible because I kind of like wanted to um, show the data after telling you the challenge kind of thing. So, um, so if it is not something that worked out well, I'm sorry about that. But then I think you guys would have understood the concept by now. The concept is to have a crisp and a very conveying visualization that is able to convey what users are required to understand, right? So let's move on. Let's look into introduction to business intelligence, right? So. What is business intelligence? So I know some of you guys uh, would have been, all, uh, could be already working in an organization or some of you guys are freshers who are trying to learn Tableau. But then what do you think we associate business intelligence most of our time in our organization, right? So most of us um, would have heard about a BI team that is, that is in, in, in our organization, right? So what these BI teams do? What do we hear frequently from these BA teams, right? What we would hear is typically dashboards, right? Uh, data gatherings, uh, ETLs. So these are the common terms we will hear from BA teams, right? Okay. Uh, just a spot check again, just to make sure like you guys are able to hear Okay, so coming back to the topic. Um, so yeah, um, business intelligence is something that is uh, often being talked about dashboards and workflows, etc. Right? It is true. When you think about it, business intelligence is a process which kinds of brings all the data that is there in different data sources into one single place and make it accessible to the users. So that is the process that is involved in business intelligence, which is a process driven by technology. When I say a process driven by technology, this collection part can involve a lot of, lot of uh, platforms, lot of technologies like ETL processes, uh, ETL tools, a lot of ETL tools you guys would have heard in the market right? Informatica. So all these things are used to collect data and bring it into one single data source, right? So it is a collection of technology 
it is it is a uh, collection of technology that is used to bring this data together and make it accessible to the users so that's why we say it is a process that is driven by technology and then the purpose of business intelligence is to provide actionable insights right there is no use of data there is no use of a dashboard if it is not conveying an actionable insight to the users right we we might have terabytes of data right think about facebook twitter these days right there is a lot of data that is going in and the amount of data that is stored in their repositories are, are huge in number right so for those data for uh, for them to invest in those infrastructures to store data only makes sense when the data is providable provided in an actionable insight right and then why is business intelligence why business intelligence is becoming so famous because we wanted to make a data driven decision process that is there in all organizations we wanted to make organizations take decisions through data rather than gut feeling right so um, so to do this business intelligence kinds of gives everything that is required for you to do a data driven decision making right and then a comprehensive view of data so when we say comprehensive view of data data can be huge right data can be available in different data sources some data could be available in say uh, sql server some could be in a cloud platform some could be in a hadoop platform so we have data that is sitting in different ways and we need a way to actually look at it in a comprehensive way right so we need a way to actually see and identify where my data is and what exactly i'm going to do with it so that is where business intelligence comes in and that is why business intelligence is becoming a keyword so this is a famous um, diagram which kinds of shows the different phases in business intelligence and i often kind of use this uh, image to convey a lot of things in in most of my trainings so when you look at this there are four phases right descriptive analytics diagnostic analytics predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics so when i say descriptive analytics it usually focus on what happened right so let me give you guys an example uh, let's think about the data that is there in your company right there would obviously be sales data say let's let's say we have sales data for the past 5 years and then uh, your company or you wanted to understand what happened in 5 years is my sales increasing or is my sales decreasing or is my sales fluctuating right so that is when you create a graph or when you create an analysis based on the historical doings or the what historically happened that is called descriptive analytics right and what is diagnostic analytics diagnostic analytics analytics is let me draw you so let's say this is a trend graph right let's say my sales is like this and then it's increasing right so let's say these are for 5 years right so descriptive analytics is basically this descriptive analytics is for me to show that uh, historically sales is uh, happening in this way diagnostic analytics is why did it happen say my sales is down here right maybe in 2019 my sales is down so for me to understand why did it happen it could be like say i will give you guys an example so the sales is down because maybe in your sales organization there is lot of a uh, lot of attrition people were moving around there were a lot of transition that was happening and then you were uh, so, so the focus was not on sales right that could be one of the reasons it is it has come down and then once the once the team has pick up it is again going to the top so that could be a reason but then 
for us to understand the root cause for the data or the trend to be lowering is called diagnostic analytics where we are able to tell the business users hey the sales is down in this year because there is some impact on your sales department so that is diagnostic analytics predictive analytics is what will happen say for example next in 2021 what would be my sales would it be like this or would it be like this or would it be like this what is the number against it so that is called predictive analytics where we would be predicting what could be happening in the next year or in the next period based on the historical behaviors so that is what predictive analytics does prescriptive analytics it's a little more advanced phase right where we can we wanted to understand how can we make it happen okay so let's say your organization will keep uh, will, will will get targets right so say your company gives a target saying like okay i understand my sales is uh, 50000 dollars till so till so and so year but then i wanted my my sales to increase by 75 percentage in the next fiscal year so if you give the uh, if they give you this um, target and then if you are able to tell them for you to increase your scale sales by 75 percentage this is what you need to do that is called prescriptive analytics so in 2021 if the sales needs to be uh, exponentially if 70 percentage high then what needs to be done right if we are able to if if a process or an algorithm is able to tell that that is called prescriptive analytics i hope this concept is clear because uh, these phases lay the foundation for what business intelligence is and how most of us can make use of business intelligence to grow as a person and also as an organization right so uh, let's move to the next slide which is what happens in bi yeah we understood what is bi we understood why bi is used but then typically what happens in bi right so let me get this pointer and i will show you guys what what it is displayed so typically in a B, in an organization there will be data sources right these data sources can could be anything it could be an sql server mysql uh, it could be uh, anything right so data would be available in different data sources and then all these data sources are consolidated into a data warehouse using an etl process so for people who are uh, new in this field etl is extract transform and load so whenever a data is in different platforms it this process will extract the data it will transform it and it will load it into this centralized repository right so that is what etl process does so once it is into the data warehouse it is opened up to the analysts and the business users to use and make sense of data right so how do we make sense of it right so dashboards scorecards the basic can reports which you guys would be seeing in your organization so all these are consumptions basically how we consume the data that is out there right and and a little more advanced things are like ad hoc analysis so when a user business user comes and ask you something that is not part of the dashboard you do ad hoc analysis and then uh, when a business user comes and asks you about how, a little more detail than what it is showing it is the data drill down and then few kpis workflow so all these things are a little more advanced on what can be done on top of this so basically this is a consume layer where we are consuming the data right so again a spot check just to make sure like all all you guys um, are not facing any technical issues okay i see few questions there so let's let's uh, please have those questions and then we can discuss that uh, at the end of um uh, during the 2 minutes question time because it's it's kind of hard to manage all the questions uh, with the level of participant that is out there but then i saw the question and i saw the answer so that is right kpis are 
key performance indicators. So basically, these are metrics based on which um, your organization's performance is derived, right? So uh, if your organization is focused on sales, then some of the KPIs uh, that would be very interesting for your organization is profit, one KPI, revenue, right? Then um, product-wise profit, if you guys have different products, if your organization has different products, what is the profit per uh, pro uh, product? So all these things are KPIs, right? So, so uh, think about this, if, if, if this is this simple, then why do we have all kinds of BI tools? We know like a lot of BI tools, every major player is entering into the BI world and creating a BI tool. So if this is as simple as what we see here, then why do we need BI tools and what gap are they going to fill, right? So if you look at this, this is a best case scenario. This is a very simple case scenario, though it explains you guys the flow. In a typical organization, it is not an ideal world, right? There are a lot of challenges that comes into way when you are doing a, 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 a particular analysis using data. So there are a lot of challenges both in this phase as well as this phase. In this phase, the challenges are we are talking about data sources, which is which could be in the native platforms, right? Think about data sources that is out there in cloud. Uh, some of you guys might have used Salesforce, Marketo, which is in the cloud platform. Then, how do you how do you bring data? Though, so the ETL uh, platform which you guys are using can it like bring data from the cloud platform also? Then social media, right? Facebook, Twitter. When you need to get data out from here, you should be using uh, something called APIs, API connections. So when you say API connection, uh, how, how is the ETL going to talk to it? So all these things are challenges, which is not outlined here because these are challenges we would be facing in a non-ideal world, which is in our organizations. And then even after the data is brought into the data warehouse, still there are a lot of questions, right? So still there are like, data would be available in multiple ways you guys need to like uh, bring data uh, three or four data together and then you need to like manipulate the data make the consolidation join it and then use it on top of it so presently if you if you can relate this to organizations which are, which are like mostly dependent on excel there would be a weekly report right for that weekly report to be sent out an analyst would be sitting and he would be gathering data from three other reports, right? Say three canned reports, and then I copy paste data from three canned reports into a, into one Excel, bring those three canned reports together using VLOOKUP, pivot tables, or whatever uh, you guys wanted to use. And then I will build a chart on top of it. So if this needs to be sent on a weekly basis, every week this needs to be refreshed or it can, there are futures where you can schedule it in excel but then the complexity is always there right and then one other thing that um that, that is a little tougher to manage in excel is excel gives you a lot of leverage to manipulate the data because you will be copy pasting the data even if you are using formula formulas there are a lot of chances where a data can be changed, which is prone to manual error. So these are the challenges which attracted the BI industry to evolve, right? So that is exactly the reason why you see Tableau, Power BI, Tipco Spotfire, and all these big major players coming into BI world, okay? So uh, let me move to the next line. Let's understand why Tableau. We all know like uh, there are a lot of BI tools that is available. Then why are we looking at Tableau alone? So when you look, when you think about the BI tools which is out there, most of you guys would have researched through the tools, and then you guys know like Tableau, Power BI, ClickSense, SciSense, Tipco, Spotfire, Looker, Elofin, ThoughtSpot. All these things are good 
BI tools that is out there in the market, then why exactly are we looking at Tableau? So I wanted to show you guys this one. So uh, to those of you who are not familiar with this, this is a quadrant. This is a, an, an insight that Gartner uh, independent consulting firm gives out based on their analysis on the BI tools. I'll give you a brief introduction on Gartner to those of you guys who, uh, who have not heard the name. So Gartner is an independent consulting firm. So what this firm does is, and, and also it is, it is widely trusted by throughout the world by different organizations. What Gartner does is it does research on all the BI tools that is out there in the market and they uh, kind of allocate these BI tools into four quadrants, which is what you see here. Leaders, challengers, visionaries, niche players. So all these quadrants helps us understand the competency of a particular BI tool. So when you look at this, Tableau and Microsoft are in the top two places, right? They are the leaders followed by Click and ThoughtSpot. So Tableau has been in this quadrant for a very long time. Tableau has been evolving throughout different, uh, different aspects of business intelligence uh, platforms, but then it has been constantly evolving and it is always here. There are a lot of reasons why Tableau is in this quadrant. While this is how uh, a consulting firm um, evaluates Tableau, we will, we will still need to understand what is so different about Tableau from a company perspective and an analyst perspective. So for that, let's, let's look at the company perspective. So for, from a com company perspective, this is scalable. The solution, uh, the tool itself is scalable. When I say scalable, think about your, uh, think about a scenario, right? A company has different org structures, a company has a sales department, a company has a finance department, a company has a uh, operations department. So think about each of these department having a small BA team to cater the needs of that, that particular function. So in this case, my BA team is small, right? Probably two or three analysts sitting and doing the analysis work that is required for that particular department. So Tableau fits in well in this kind of small environment. And on the other hand, think about a BI team that is a centralized, a big organization having a centralized BI team to handle all BI, BI kind of requests from all the departments. So this could be a lot of analysts sitting in one place and coordinating different departments. So in this kind of huge environment, also Tableau fits in. So that is one of the major reasons companies are preferring Tableau and it is, and that's the reason it is being called scalable, right? And then Tableau handles large volumes of data. The process speed is also high. Think about, obviously Excel also has 10 lakh rows, right? So what is so different here? So think about this case. You have close to like five lakh rows in your Excel, right? And then uh, on top of it, what you're trying to do is you're, you're putting 10 to 15 calculated fields, which are VLOOKUPs and then few other calculations. So when you close it and when you open it, how soon do you think the Excel file is going to open? You would always see the processing that is happening at the bottom right corner. So people who have used Excel and people who have used all these manual reports, they would be able to associate this very well, right? So that much amount of work and complexities was involved, right? So that is one of the major reasons Tableau is being adopted by companies. And then the execution part. In Tableau, the execution is faster. You would be able to go through the execution phase quite fast and with less, less complexity, right? That is one another reason. And then the other thing is about the facilities and 
features. Tableau gives you a lot of offers to drill down into data, to understand what exactly the data is showing, to understand if the data is showing, uh, showing the right thing or if the data is showing the wrong thing. So these abilities and features are out there in Tableau. I know like when I'm walking through you guys, walking through this with you guys, certain things are vague or certain things are not uh, conveying what uh, what needs to be conveyed from a practical perspective but then uh, understand this <clears throat> to the extent possible and you guys would be able to relate it much further when we are going through the practical work right so evolving evolving so uh, why do we do why, why do the company's perspective has to be concentrated on evolving because I don't know how um, um, if you guys have heard a tool called Excel Shears. So SAP had a product called Excel Shears before some years, right? It was widely adopted. As you guys know, SAP um, has control over a lot of companies in terms of the ETL process that is being handled. SAP handles it and in terms of the basic reporting that could be done. So this Excel Shears is supposed to be a dashboard designing tool that analyst can use on top of SAP's data. So obviously it's a good, good suite, right? So it was a lot of companies were using that, but then now when you look up, look back at it, no one is using, right? Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say no one is using, but then a very less percentage of uh, companies are using. Why is this? Because when it come to evolving to the recent business needs, Excel Shears was not there, right? Right now, there are different products in SAP that is trying to get back the um, attention that is required in data visualization and uh, um, B, uh, the BI kind of thing which Tableau is doing. But then it is, the previous tool was not evolving. So what happens when this happens is, uh, say a company is using Excel Shears for all its dashboard. When, it's, when it wants to move to another tool, it needs to transform all these trans dashboards to the new tool, which is a lot of work for the company. So companies always prefer tools or, company, uh, or um, technologies that is evolving, right? And growth rate. Obviously, Tableau had a, a, a great growth rate in terms of the platforms that they are using and in pla in terms of the business problems they were solving. Okay, this is company's perspective. From an analyst perspective, learning Tableau gives a good career opportunity. Why is this? Because it is important for anyone to understand, be, be it a business stakeholder or be it a core analyst who wants to go into the data field, it is very important for anyone to understand the data right understanding the data is driven by tableau technology in most of the companies now so if you have this skill the opportunity you would be getting both on the business side and on the technology side is high so learning curve so tableau kind of has two different learning curves when i say two different learning curves for business stakeholders who wanted to create basic visualization in few clicks, Tableau has a very easy learning curve, right? So anyone would be able to browse through or get the basics out of Tableau and they can form the visualizations. But then the other part is for analysts, right? For core data analysts who wanted to be advanced in Tableau. So for them, the learning curve is a little steep. When I say steep, the more advanced you wanted to be with Tableau, the more practice and training is required. So that is about the learning curve. And then community. So most of us, right? Uh, most of us who are associated with different technologies are um, different platforms, different coding languages. What typically happens is we start doing something and then we, uh, we, we get an error. So then what we do, we Google it right we google it we look for solution and then you get the solution you try to apply that logic so for for you to get a solution as easy as that there should be an active community tableau has a very active community where there are a lot of knowledge bases that is available 
when you need to do something that is advanced and when you need to do something that is complicated right and the last part is fun to work why do we say fun to work because obviously we are not going to worry about cons uh, bringing data copy pasting it um, organizing the data that is required we just need to go into tableau and start building the data and the value it adds is we are looking through the data right away instead of doing all the cleaning works that is required okay okay so let me so let's see a short quote about the demand for tableau skills so as per uh, a learning and development portal so the demand for tableau skill is described as this apart from the fact that there is an excellent demand for tableau developers the pay package is higher as compared to that of other job profiles a tableau developer's salary in india is on the rise and experienced developers are earning as much as uh, inr 15 lakh and more annually so uh, let me let me be uh, be clear so uh, this is not to boost tableau's uh, demand or this is not to boost or showcase something that is not a reality most of you guys before you guys have uh, taken away 3 years of your time for this workshop would have done enough research on why tableau right you guys would have done tableau's demand tableau's uh, need and all those things so you guys would have been aware of what it really is worth okay but this is just to reiterate that this is just for you guys to understand that there is a lot of demand for tableau skills and when you are a person who is trying to move in the, into the analytics field Tableau is definitely a product skill that needs to be added to your build. Okay. Okay. So time for questions. So let's take a couple of uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please ping in, and I will try to address that. Whichever I can address during this session. What are the Tableau advantages over click and power BI. So good question. So, okay. How long is the course duration? What is ad hoc analysis? Okay. Okay. Coding is required. So coding is not required. What is ad hoc analysis is, um, is it similar to SAP? No. Coding is not required. If you are not into software side, but Excel tableaus prefer. Okay. Um, so okay, uh, someone has asked like, if you are not into the software side, but Excel with tableaus preferred, yeah, you can use that. And then connecting to other data sources is also not not complicated. Uh, how can you differentiate Power BI versus Tableau? I would like prefer you guys to uh, browse through that because that kinds of gives a lot of attributes. But then both are similar tools with their own competencies. Explain Tipco Spot Fire. Tipco, okay, uh, what is the difference between is SQL knowledge required for Tableau? Not necessarily. SQL knowledge, uh, basic knowledge will help to do advanced things, but not necessarily. Can we code Python in Tableau? So uh, you can, but then uh, Tableau has an excellent integration with R uh, to do some of the basic advanced steps. Sorry, to some of the advanced steps, but not Python to that extent. But yeah, Python can be used, but you cannot code it inside Tableau. Uh, server administration is covered. Is there a specific job opening for Tableau? Uh, so see, when you ask about job openings for Tableau, there are specific uh, openings for Tableau developers and there are also roles that involves Tableau, where Tableau is one of the skills that is required. But in either case, having Tableau is good. What are the necessary to expertise in Tableau? So in tablet for you to get expertized, you need to like uh, have it, uh, you need to practice it. You need to make sure you're addressing real life problems with Tableau. So that is how you expertized in Tableau. So that is what our uh, more advanced courses would be covering. We would be covering uh, what would be the organizational challenges or questions that you could be facing and how you can deal with it. 
right? And then uh, how much data can it handle smoothly? Uh, okay. See, when you say data, it is not only based on rows, it is based on column also. But uh, Tableau has a capacity to, okay, handle huge volumes of data and you can find this further information online or you can email and I will be happy to help you. Is Tableau important for business analyst? It is when you are looking for business analyst role into a data profile. So business analyst is of two types. One is uh, into business analysis requirement gathering and then the other is into business analytics which is data analysis. When you are trying to go into data analysis, it is very, very important. Uh, I'm from non-technical background, uh, know Excel very well. Will it suitable to me to do so? Absolutely. So it is actually more suitable to you because when you're making the transition from Excel to another tool uh, like Tableau, it is going to be easy because you would be able to relate it a little more easier. Is Tableau license free? No, we will, going, we will be going through that, but it is not free. Uh, guys, first attention. Okay, how about data science? Can it any better than any competitors? Um, okay, so so uh, few topics are going a little advanced. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to stop the questioning for now. Apologies if I'm not able to answer your question, but then you please route it through Divya to Excelitics email, and I'll be happy to answer all these questions. Okay, so. Let's let's move um, move ahead with the course, uh, guys. I'm sorry, but please uh, please stop with your questions. Uh, I know, like I was able to answer a few questions, but then the remaining questions, please please pass it over through Excelitics so that I can address it separately. So let's see an introduction to Tableau. I think most of you guys were asking like if Tableau is free um, and all those things. So let's see what it is. Right, introduction to Tableau. This is what Tableau defines about itself. Tableau can help anyone see and understand their data. Connect to almost any database, drag and drop to create visualizations and share with a click. So in a nutshell, what Tableau is trying to convey is, uh, it is an easy to use tool where it takes away a lot of difficulties we guys would have faced when working with other technologies, right? So uh, that is exactly where Tableau comes in and it says that it is able to simplify things and make the visualization to the next level, okay? Okay, so let's see what are the products that is associated with Tableau. So these are, the products that is that Tableau has. Tableau Desktop, Tableau Server, Tableau Online, Tableau Prep. And I have specifically mentioned Tableau Public, though I have mentioned it already here. Let's look at one by one and let's understand what these products are, right? Tableau Desktop is a software you guys would be installing in your system to start developing dashboards and make data preparation, right? So Tableau Desktop is a software that will be installed in your system that is mostly used for working through it. So this is the major part where you will be doing all the data cleaning work and the visualization stuff. So it has two types of variants in it. One is enterprise and the other is public. Enterprise is a professional edition. It is licensed and, it, uh, and uh, uh, it is used in organizations for commercial purpose. Public is a free version. Public is for most of us who are trying to learn Tableau. Say, or if you want to get Tableau certified and if you want to learn Tableau to understand the basic concepts, that is when, uh, that is when you can use Tableau Public. Right? Tableau Public is a free version which we would be using in this session also. And there are some limitations in Tableau Public, which we would be addressing a little later, right? And then Tableau Server. So what does this do? Okay, you have downloaded the Tableau Desktop. You have installed it in your system. 
and then you have created a neat visualization, then what? It needs to be shared with your users, right? It needs to be shared with your business stakeholders with appropriate security, right? You create a confidential dashboard, which kinds of shows the revenues of the company. You, you don't want it to be seen by someone who's not supposed to see that, right? So to, to make that possible, Tableau Server is a platform where the dashboards that is developed in the desktop can be published and can be shared with users with appropriate data permissions, right? With appropriate access permissions. So that is what Tableau Server does, correct? So Tableau Server also has two variants. One is enterprise and the other one is public. The enterprise variants is mostly for organizations, right? You create a confidential dashboard in your Tableau desktop enterprise version and you wanted to publish it into the enterprise server to be shared to the business stakeholders. So that is where Tableau Server Enterprise comes in. Public. Public is a public server that is out there where when you create a Tableau desktop in public, which is using a free license, you can publish it into the public server, which would be viewable by everyone. Right? So that is what Tableau server public does and then tableau online so the reason tableau online came into picture is in case of this right in case of, in case of an enterprise tableau server the enterprise should be maintaining the server so they will have to go through all the maintenance work all the patchwork that needs to be done on any typical server and they have to allocate resources to have this maintained right so that is when tableau went came in with a new initiative which said, okay, you guys don't have to maintain the server. We will have server on our side and we will just give you the solution. So Tableau Online is kind of a serverless solution where organizations don't have to worry about the server. All they need to do is access it with all the features that is there in Tableau Server. So that is Tableau Online. And most of our organizations in these days are moving towards Tableau Online specifically because it is it is more easy to maintain tableau prep tableau prep is an initiative by tableau to dive into the data preparation industry right there are a lot of tools which helps you prepare data to do all the manipulations and the dirty work that is required to be done in a data before it moves into the next level of consumption so that is what Tableau Prep does. What basically Tableau Prep does is it gets data and combines that together. You, uh, you can drag and drop. You can do all the data manipulations and cleanings that is required with less coding. So that is what Tableau Prep does, right? What we would be using in this session is Tableau Public, right? There are a few limitations in this. Uh, where it is a free version, which is not a limitation, but then you won't be able to save a file that is created in public, right? You would be forced to save it into the enterprise public server. So when you create a dashboard, you won't be able to save it in your local system. You can publish it into the public server, which, which would be open to be viewed by anyone, right? And then there are some limitations in terms of how Tableau connects to data sources or in terms of the number of sources that Tableau connects to data sources in Tableau public. And then there are obviously some role limits also compared to what the enterprise gives. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, Let's look into Excel versus Tableau. So this, uh, this would give you guys a good amount of idea about why is Tableau being continuously adopted by different organizations that, are, that were mostly dependent on, on Excel previously. So most of us would have either faced it in our organizations or most of us would have heard it from a different organization that their team is moving towards Tableau. They are moving from Excel to Tableau or changing a report from Excel to Tableau. This has been something which is continuously being heard, right? 
So make no mistake, Tableau is a, equal to Tableau, Excel is also a wonderful tool. The purpose of this exercise is not to undermine the capabilities of Excel because Excel has a lot of capabilities and it is one of the best tools. But then the reason for Tableau to come in is for the ease of few things, for, for to take away the data related um, what leverages that could be used by users to manipulate the data or to make manual errors and to make the process itself and to take the process itself to the next level. That is when Tableau is used. So what we would be doing is, instead of looking at Excel versus Tableau directly, understanding their different, what we will do is a practical example. I will walk you through what I did in Excel, what we can do in Excel and what Tableau does in a very short way. And then we can, uh, we can understand on a concept perspective, what is exactly the difference that makes uh, sense for us when we compare Excel to Tableau, right? So what I would be doing is, I, uh, so I have already downloaded this, but this is out to you guys. So those of you who wanted to follow with me, they can, uh, but then um, uh, else they can, they can kind of do it at a later stage. Uh, excuse me for one second. Sorry about that. So let me ping you guys this link in the chat. Right. Okay, one second. Okay. Okay, uh, so guys, um, I would be taking this forward with uh, with my pace uh, because it is hard to um, do a working session with the amount of participants that is here. But uh, if you are not able to follow it through, that is fine. Uh, please feel free to uh, revisit this video. I think once it is published in the YouTube, you, you guys can uh, subscribe to Excelitics and once it is published in the YouTube, you guys can go back to these links and uh, you can download the data and you can recreate what we are doing. Okay, so uh, this is what you see here is coronavirus data that uh, I have put together during one of my analysis a few weeks before. So this data might not be the latest data, but then it serves the purpose of being used for a data preparation. So what we would try to do in Excel is summarize data to continent level. So the data basically has continent, countries, and confirmed cases. We would uh, see um, how to summarize data at continent level, right? And then what we will try to do is, we will try to add filter capabilities to filter, uh, to filter desired countries. And then we will create calculated fields. So for those of you guys who are uh, already well-versed in Excel, this would be very basic. But then I just wanted to make sure like I cover this for people who are beginning to start their career in this as well. Okay, so let me open the file. Okay, this is the file, I have downloaded it. Let me open it. So the first thing is I wanted to summarize to the continent level. So which can be done by just selecting it. Insert, pivot table. Okay, right now we get a pivot table with all the um, all the attributes that is a, that was there in our source data. So what I will typically do, country in rows. I'm just dragging drop in rows, and you would be able to see it here. And then confirmed cases, deaths, recovery. 
now we have all these uh, all these things here now if i wanted to change from sum to average what i will typically do is change it here which doesn't make sense for me so i'm i'm just giving a control z to come back to the sum right now we have continents and their confirmed cases aggregated that is what this shows us right so say for example i wanted to have continent as a filter and i wanted to see country level of detail so what i will typically do is drag and drop my continent here and bring my country rows so what do you see here what do you see here is continent as filter and countries that is listed out in rows so i can filter it here i can click here select multiple filters i can see it for asia alone right or i can see it for any other continent right now the last final thing i wanted to create a calculated field which shows percentage death and percentage recovery against confirmed cases so what i will do is you see the pivot um, analyze pivot table analyze section here fields item and sets i click here create calculated fields i will name this field as percentage deaths and formula i will just change saying death insert divided by confirmed cases insert okay now what happens the percentage of death i'm sorry actually the percentage death is here so what i wanted here to do is i wanted to create a same thing for recovery also so again i go to fields calculated fields percentage recovery recovery insert field divided by confirmed cases insert field okay now we can select this we can say we wanted to see this as a percentage right neat so this is what this this is what we are able to do in excel which is which is not something that is not enough this is enough but then what we are trying to do is if you look at it we are trying to do all the computation based on cell level right all these calculations are based out in cell level because data in excel is showed in a tabular format so this is a table format so data is in excel is stored in a table format so our computation needs to be at cell level so here if you click asia you can see the format is changing so i need to like come back make the format again to percentage but then what is happening here is this is the maximum analysis you guys are able to get right of course you can bring in charts you can bring in things that that uh, can be built on top of it but th those are not coming out naturally for you guys so those are things that needs to be put effort and things that needs to be built on top of it right so uh, think about your manager asking a kind of requirement that is similar to this right if you provide this to them what would be the inference they would be taking and say a little more effort than this or probably the same or a little more effort and time in this and then if you are able to show something like this right which one do you think uh, so actually uh, considering uh, we ourselves in our management seat right which one do you think you will encourage right i would encourage this the reason is the visualization right i am able to make sense of the data that is available in a much more visual capability right this kinds of gives what we were trying to show in the table but then in a little more advanced way right so uh, it shows confirmed cases in continents it shows confirmed cases by countries in a neat map 
it shows deaths and recoveries reported. I'm sorry, this is countries. I, I put it as continents. Please don't mind. And there is, it is also a relationship. There is also something that shows relationship between deaths and recovery, uh, recoveries in countries, right? So what will also happen is, uh, say I wanted to look for Asia. I click here. I'm sorry. Yeah, I click here. So Asian countries will get highlighted. We are able to see the numbers in India. Scroll down, it is highlighted for Asian countries. We are able to see the numbers here. And then these are also filtered out for Asian countries. Similarly, I can see for other countries, Africa, transcontinental countries, South America, right? North America. So all these things in a single click. And a little more information on this is, have a look at this. Typically what it shows is the relationship between death numbers and recovery numbers. The purpose of this graph is, hover over this, you will be able to see the numbers. United States, right? This shows death also is high in United States and recovery is also high in United States and you are able to see the numbers. Okay, let's take this one, Russia. Death is less. Right? Death is less. But then the recovery is more. Right? This kind of gives you very good information. Even in Brazil, Brazil death is less, recovery is more. Right? This kind of data gives you very good information on what you guys are looking for. Just in a snapshot of snapshot of seconds. And then the other benefit is you click here. United States. Right? Oh, I'm sorry, one second. You will be able to see the filter applying here also. Right? And then the other feature is click here, go here, view data. Right? The data behind those numbers will open up. Show all columns, you would be able to see the raw data in this. So for these things to happen in Excel, right? So think about a pivot table. Obviously, when you double click a pivot table number in Excel, it will take you to the data. But is that as convenient as what you see here, right? So that is exactly where Tableau comes in. So we would be uh, in the, in, we will have one more practical session where I will show you guys how to develop this dashboard from the scratch. But then the purpose of uh, showing you these two is to understand the first concept, which is the differentiation between Excel and Tableau, right? So coming back to the presentation. Now we will see the difference between Excel and Tableau. Just relate back to what we just saw. When we were doing the data discovery, for me to do anything Productive in Excel, I had to have the initial idea about what needs to be done, right? Which is not actually data discovery because data discovery is in terms of discovering patterns in data and not to know something that is, that is very well known to you and then look for that particular thing in Excel, right? It, it compromises the flexibility also, right? Uh, you are not able to do whatever you want and understand the pattern. You are able to do it on a face-wise face manner. You, you will have to do it one by one and then you will have to reach the final goal. And the final goal, if you realize, okay, this is not what I should be looking at. I should be looking at a completely different angle. Then you need to redo the process again, right? So that is what happens with Excel. And then when it comes to the automation, Excel provides automation facilities. You can do manual programming, right? You can enter formulas, you can make things simplified uh, and do all those good stuff in automation. But then how feasible it is to maintain it is something with that we need to consider. VBA is there, macros are there. You guys can record macros. Uh, VBA codes can be done to automate uh, tasks in Excel, but then it is not as easy as to be learned like Tableau. 
right? It requires a lot of programming. VBA is Visual Basics is a separate code which you should be learning for that, right? And then visualization, cell level data manipulation. Data in Excel is in the form of tabular format. So when whenever we wanted to address the data or whenever we wanted to make changes to the data, we are doing it at cell level, right? So that is one of the major reasons where we are not directly jumping into visualization in Excel. Right. So when we consider the, the same thing in Tableau, data discovery, I can explore the data in Tableau without any initial idea. I can start dragging and dropping things in randomly and then start discovering data or pattern in it. Right. So that is one of the major things that uh, Tableau brings up. Right. And then inbuilt features that is available to you to drill down. We just saw, right? So we saw a number. We were able to see, go in and see the underlying data that is available. So that level of ease is provided by Tableau so that we can understand where exactly the root causes, right? And then automation. Tableau has a very intuitive creation process. When I say intuitive creation process, without much effort, within uh, with a few clicks. Tableau would be able to go through the creation process in a much faster way than what you see in Excel, right? In Excel, we saw we were creating all, uh, we were trying to summarize data, we were trying to first set the data structure so that we can take the data into a visualization mode, right? Which is, which is not the case in Tableau. It's a much more automation oriented and it is much more easy to use. Right, and then the visualization. Tableau is visualization ready, meaning once you connect your data to Tableau, you can start diving into visualization right away. Right, and then uh, it is to understand the context in the data. Tableau is designed in the way to show you visualization, which helps you go through the context. Right, which helps you understand the context. So that is. That is the major difference you guys could see uh, when you compare an uh, Excel with Tableau, right? So I will open open it up to questions. Uh, give you guys a couple of minutes so that you can ask if there was any doubts or questions. If I'm not clear, you guys can let me know. Uh, Can we do arithmetic functions such as log? Yes, you can do. Can VBA be built in Tableau? No, VBA. V, so that, that's one of the major problems with uh, uh, VBA, right? So you can uh, use it, but um, you can use it in Microsoft Suite. So you can use it in Excel, but then not in Tableau. Without knowing VBA and macros, we can use Tableau visualization. Absolutely, you can. Um, so, Backup, what is backup? Uh, Ayush, can you be a little more elaborate on what you mean by backup? Uh, how much size of data can we load in Tableau? So Tableau supports uh, a huge volumes of data, but when I'm saying huge volumes of data, data is not only with respect to the rows, right? Whenever you consider any major tools, data is not only with relation to the rows, it is both rows and columns. So, uh, so you get Python with Tableau can be used. Yeah, as I said, it can be, but then Python has, uh, Tableau has a direct interaction with R. Okay. Uh, is Tableau property a component license separately or combined with an enterprise edition? So usually it is licensed separately. Uh, what are the skills required to learn Tableau? Excel is mandatory to learn Tableau. Not required, not required. Uh, in a sales research, can Tableau perform over Excel? So when you say sales research, uh, you're saying about a research, a sales data that is out there in your company or uh, be elaborate, but then yeah, Tableau can perform over Excel. Is Tableau limited to reporting only and after learning Tableau, which is another software as support? Okay, I'm not quite getting that question, but then Tableau is not, not limited to reporting alone. It can be used for data science, to understanding data, 
uh, data exploratory analysis and all those good stuff you can do with Tableau. Macros program to execute that program, we need them. Oh yeah, Praveen is right. Which one is better, Power BI or Tableau? Uh, both the tools has its pros and cons, uh, Mohammed. So uh, more companies, especially in India, if you see it is inclined towards Tableau, if you see some companies in the West, they are inclined towards Power BI. So it depends on what requirements uh, the organization has. Um, macro program can all functions. Future ways different between enterprise and public Tableau. Yeah, I think we just saw the future ways difference that is uh, there with enterprise and public, right? So there are limitations in how you can publish the data, how you can save it, etc. Okay, so there are uh, there are few specific questions with respect to uh, what can be done with Tableau, uh, which which might not be uh, might not be uh, appropriate for this. Uh, I wouldn't say appropriate, but uh, might not be something that would fit into the schedule for this session. So uh, if you guys have any doubts, you guys can reach out to Excelitics and then uh, I can chip in whenever is required to help you guys so that we can do. But then uh, the purpose, let's, uh, let's reiterate again, the purpose of this exercise is to give you guys the basic idea about uh, what Tableau can do and how it is useful in your career. And then um, uh, when you guys wanted to look for some advanced features, so there are different ways to do it, right? So, so we are good. Let's, uh, guys, I will have to uh, stop the questions for now. Um, so uh, let's, let's take a break for 15 minutes. Uh, the time is 11.25 now. Uh, let's meet back at 11.40. And then what we would be seeing is we will be getting started with Tableau. We would be creating our first visualization and we would be using the tool. So refresh yourself and be back in 15 minutes. Thank you.
Hello guys. <clears throat> so our break is up and then uh, I see like the participants numbers are a little low. So probably let us give, a, give them a couple of more minutes for them to join and then we will get started. Okay, so uh, let's let's kind of uh, start moving forward so that uh, I know like some of you guys have also mentioned that uh, you were not able to follow a few part of the video because uh, of your internet connection and then a few are trying to kind of reach out to me. So, uh, so this video would be published by Excelletics in their YouTube channel. So those of you who haven't subscribed for the YouTube channel of Excelletics, please subscribe so that once the video is there, you guys will know. And there were a few other people who are trying to reach out to me uh, uh, to get involved in some of the industry standard stuff that's happening and some of the uh, articles and videos which I've been using for them. Uh, please, please uh, uh, connect to me in my LinkedIn uh because my uh, personal uh, mobile and email might not be the one that would work out for all the professional conversations so reach out to my linkedin and for those of you guys uh, who, who wants to look at some of the videos that is out there you guys can search for my name in youtube and you should be able to see the videos that i have published on data science and data analytics okay so moving ahead with this uh, course let's start getting started with tableau so this is one of the uh, critical sessions uh, critical session in this video right because all we were uh, looking forward is yes we understood uh, what is business intelligence why does tableau play a vital role in it and all those good stuff but then uh, all we were looking for is to start doing tableau hands-on right so first let's see how tableau can be set up Right, uh, I I will post this link. So this is the link from where you can download Tableau. Public, copy link. Okay, you guys would have got that link and then again, I'm, I'm sending you guys the link for the data, which most of you guys would have downloaded, but then I'm just sending it again to be on the safer side. Right, so hold on, uh, you, do, uh, you don't have to like do it right now. I will walk you through like what needs to be done. Uh, so first, right, one second. When you click here, right, it will take you this, to this page. What you need to do is for those of you guys who have not installed Tableau on their system before, you will have to install this public version. For those of you guys who already have a Tableau Enterprise version in their laptop, they can still have another Tableau public. Uh, in their uh, installed in their system because Tableau as a product it can coexist, right? All you need to do is uh, enter your email here, 
and then download the app right once you do that the download will start and then once the download is completed go through the installation process right so installation after installing it as i said multiple version of the product can coexist right then you will have to create a public profile to publish this dashboard right so what you need to do is go to the site click sign up give your name give your email password confirm password and then create your profile so what will this do is once you create a tableau dashboard in tableau public excuse me you will have to publish it right you cannot save it in your desktop you will have to publish it for that dashboard to be saved so this profile gives you the access to that public profile got it so once you create this you will have the public profile and uh, that's what you need to do so once these two are these two are done you will have to download the covid-19 data from the following link right use that link download it and then we are ready for our analysis now we will start creating our first visualization okay so i know like for guys who are just downloading it and getting it installed it will take some time but then again as i mentioned earlier this recording would be given to you guys in youtube as um, i believe so you can recreate it so those who already have the software they can start doing it or then uh, those who wanted to do it later they can also do it right so i'm um, so i see like there are some questions let me quickly see if there is any major concerns um uh, recordings to the emails a humble request i'm so sorry I'm, i'm i'm not really sure like how that works maybe like uh, divya you can make a note of this request um recordings to the emails but i i don't think like it will work in that way so but, but probably divya uh, take a request and then uh, uh, we will let you know like what better can be done okay uh okay so let's start our practical thing right okay what we will do is we will open our tableau public okay once you opened your tableau public you would be able to see the connection properties at the left hand side like this right and you would be able to obviously see some materials overview and so and so at your right hand side so when you look at this the connection has two attributes to a file and to a server under to a file you can see microsoft excel you can see text file you can see json and so and so right to a server if you click you will be able to see google sheets and web data connector now the major difference between a tableau public and a tableau enterprise version is the number of connections it offers tableau connects to almost all major data connections data um, um, databases data platforms that is out there in today's world right tableau connects to each and every uh, most most of the things if not also it provides leverages where you can make your own connections right but that will not be available for you in the public version obviously because this is for getting trained in tableau and not to do anything on the commercial aspect right so uh, in a enterprise version if you guys have any you could have seen like a lot of connectors that is available here okay so what we are going to do here is i have already downloaded the data which you guys would have found in the github link which i sent across okay now i need to connect my tableau to the excel right that is my first step so what i will do is i will click excel 
right? Navigate to the folder where you have saved the Excel. Double click this, right? So what you see here is, you see the connections, you see the sheets. So these are the major, two major things. New Union, is, it is an operator which you, guys, you can use for combining um, two different table structures, but then major aspect is these connections and sheets, right? So connections, you are able to see the Microsoft Excel and you are able to see an add feature. So this add is presently we are connected to only one data source. Say if you guys wanted to work with multiple data sources, right? You can click this add, you can connect another data source and it would be here right and whenever you connect to a data source now we have connected to microsoft excel so there are two sheets in the excel if you can see this is something which we created so i'm just deleting it originally there are two sheets sheet one and sheet two right so you are able to see that if you have connected it to a microsoft sql server say this connection is microsoft sql server then you would be able to see the schemas, databases, and then you will tables under the schemas. So all those information would be here, right? Tableau provides some cool features to make cross database joins, which is say if I have a table data in Microsoft SQL server and I have another table in my SQL server, Tableau provides a feature where you guys would be able to join these two different data sources and create one consolidated view, which comes in the more advanced uh, uh, versions, uh, I'm sorry, which comes in the more advanced uh, lessons, but then that feature is there, right? So what I will do is I wanted to play around with sheet one, right? You can view the data here, to understand how the data is appearing, right? Just to be double sure. Close it and then double click. Now the data is loaded, right? Now let's, let's take a quick look at the UI. What you see here is the database name, the connection name that is there and the sheet that is selected, right? What you see here is the sheet that we have selected. So this is the area where you would be able to do joints, data preparation, data manipulation, all those things. So this is the area where majorly the table joins happens, right? Table joins when you wanted to give a primary key uh, condition, all those things happens here. And what you see here is data displayed out. If you take a look at this, there are some features here for you to click here and change the data type. Say ABC, it shows this as a string. I want it probably like it is showing it right, but then if it is wrong, I can go in and change here, right? Wherever you click, you would be able to see the facility to change the data. And also there are some extra facilities like rename, copy, you can create calculated fields, all those good stuff, which is a little advanced. So um, we won't be going through that in detail now because our purpose is to give an overview about how Tableau is used, right? There are also filters, data source filters, say for example, if I wanted to add filter, right? And if I wanted to say like, okay, there are these many countries here. I don't want all these countries. I just want few countries, right? I can select here, give okay. So what will happen is before even data is brought into the platform where you will do visualization, data would already be filtered, right? So these are basic stuff. So what we will do is we will move into our sheet and we will start building some visualization. So before we move into the sheet, let's understand what are the different aspects that is available in Tableau. If you hover over it, you will see new worksheet, right? If you hover over here, you will see dashboard and you will see story, right? So let me, let me try to put 
this together into a node, right? The hierarchy is worksheet, dashboard, and then story is a different thing. So what would happen is all visualizations, all views, visualizations are created in the worksheet first, right? And then in the dashboard, all worksheets are consolidated. So say I created five worksheets with views, right? My dashboard is where I will be consolidating these five worksheets to show it into one particular dashboard, right? Story is used when I wanted to convey my insights to the users, right? Insights in views or worksheets. Say I created a graph in the worksheet, right? Uh, a view in the worksheet and I have some invite uh, insights that needs to be communicated. So that is when story is used. Story, you can create a story on the view that you have created and you can publish it and show it to the business users, right? I hope this gives the basics, but you will be able to get this to uh, uh, get this more while we are trying to do it practically. So uh, let me go to the sheet, and this is how my sheet looks. This is how the worksheet looks. You would be able to see the data that is out at the top, right? Uh, the data source which we just connected, and then there is another tab which is analytics which gives you some of the ready-made features that is required for developing a analytical visualization right when i say analytical visualization there are a lot of advanced charts like control chart that is used majorly in project management which uh, which needs some of the advanced analytical features so tableau gives you these ready-made options where you can do this in a more advanced way right constant lines average lines median with quartiles quartiles are typically um, more aligned to statistic statistical methodologies where uh, in box charts etc you use quartiles to differentiate like 25 percentage 50 75 and 100 so uh, it gives the flexibility to create some visualizations with that box plot totals uh, model when i say model it is uh, creating a, a simple forecast a trend line these might not be the advanced machine learning uh, trend analysis you guys would like to do but these will give you the basic idea about how a trend will work so creating a cluster all these ready-made things are, uh, are under model and then custom is when you wanted to put a reference line uh, distribution band etc you can use this so these are again advanced topics but just I, I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what it provides as a ready-made out-of-the-box solution and what you can use with without any coding right let's go back to data <clears throat> so in data right when when you come into a data source you will typically be able to see two different sections right just a spot check uh, let me quickly see if there is any okay just to make sure like uh, you guys are on the same page sadi kansari why she three was not showing there because i deleted it okay so can you repeat it once again ranjit i'm so sorry ranjit uh, 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 but I think once the video is there, you should be able to recreate it. Okay, so I'm sorry I will have to close the chat uh, because of the time constraint and the number of participants. But then let's start the session. As I said, the recording would be shared to you in one form or the another, or another's, and you guys can recreate it. Okay, so uh, once you look at the data here after connection, you would be able to see two sections. You can be you would be able to see a minute line here in few versions of tableau you would be able to see dimensions and measures named as here in in this version of tableau you're just seeing the uh, fields that is segregated as top and bottom right so 
a very important concept you guys has to remember when you work with Tableau or any data visualization tool, be it Power BI or anything, is there are two types of fields that is used when visualization happens, right? Those are dimensions and meshes, right? Let me, right? dimensions measures so what are these dimensions typically in tableau what okay sorry typically in tableau what you see in the top section is dimension and what you see <coughs> sorry in the bottom section are measures right so what are dimensions dimensions are basically categorical fields right when i say categorical fields these are mostly text fields that is used to slice and dice data, right? Slice and dice data. Example is gender, correct? So gender is used to slice and dice the numbers that we wanted to show. Country, as you see here, it is a dimension, right? Product is a dimension so typically what dimension does is dimension gives you the control to define the level of detail in data that you need you need to show in a visualization let's look at this itself right we have continent we have country when i wanted to show continent level of detail i will just mention i will just drag and drop the continent mesh measure sorry, continent dimension, right? So this dimension, what it does is it aggregates all these numbers to continent level. So that is the function of these two, right? So dimension is nothing but, it is able to make the numbers aggregate to the level what you're looking for. So that is what dimensions. So measures are basically facts, numerical variables, majorly numerical variables. So these numerical variables are useful in aggregating, right? So what you see here is confirmed cases for country. What will happen when I put in a dimension saying continent and then when I put in, a, put in the confirmed cases? It will aggregate up, right? It will roll up to the level of continent. So that is the function of measures. So measures are basically facts, numerical variables that are used for aggregation. Got it? So these are the two main things which you guys need to understand before uh, we go ahead with the Tableau working session, right? Because this gives you the base on how Tableau would be considering the fields while creating visualization. Got it? Okay, so let's go back to Tableau. So what we wanted to do, do is, I wanted to see the confirmed cases in continents, right? So before we drag and drop here, what you see here is this sheet one is where the visualization happens. So you can drag and drop your columns anywhere here and you should be able to see the visualization. You, the rows and columns here works in similar fashion where you can drag, drop it here and you should be, uh, let me show an example. I'm dragging country, dropping it in rows. So I'm able to see the country details, right? There is options like filters, pages, marks. Marks is very important. Marks is typically people who have been well versed with Excel. Whenever you create a graph, there is a set of properties which you can manipulate for the graph to appear in the way you want it. So that is exactly what marks does. Marks controls how a visualization appears. Right now, you are able to see the data in text, right? And if you see here, text is what it is mentioned here. You click here, you will be able to see a lot of options, but then since it is mentioned as text, you are seeing this as text, T, right? So we will, we will look into what Marks does while we move through this session. So uh, this is country and let's say like this is confirmed cases. 
So what I just did is I, I double clicked it. So there is an option where you can drag and drop into wherever you want and you will be able to see the numbers or you can double click it and Tableau will intelligently show you the visualization that is appropriate for the details you are selecting. Right? So I'm able to see it in numbers but then what I wanted to do is to create a normal visualization say a pie chart. Right? But I wanted to do it from the highest level of detail. First, let me drag this back here. I want continent level of confirmed cases. I will double click continent. Right? I will double click confirmed cases. I have this number. Right? If you look at here, the number is available in text. So you, you would be able to see the T mark here. It says text. Right? So you would be able to see a show me at the top right corner. Once you click it, you guys would be able to see, one second, you guys would be able to see all the ready-made visualizations that is available in Tableau. And when you hover over it, it also tells you like what is required. You see like few visualizations are enabled and few visualizations are disabled, right? This is because once you select the fields that is required to create a visualization, Tableau will automatically tell you what visualizations are appropriate for the fields we have selected. So if you see pie chart, it says below for pie charts try one or more dimensions, one or two measures, right? This is the dimensions and measures we just saw. So based on a dimension or a measure which you guys select, Tableau will show you the visualizations that is appropriate and the visualizations that is not appropriate, right? So I wanted to create a pie chart. I will click here. You guys are able to see a pie chart here, right? And then what I do is, I this is the way fit works, right? So what I will do is I will click here. You would be able to see standard fit width, fit height, entire view. I will click entire view. So this, this fits to the entire screen, right? So now I want to add some data label. So what I will do is in the mark session, you see label. I will click here. I will show data label. You are able to see the numbers, right? But I wanted to show the country name also here. So what I will do is I will drag, I'm sorry, continent drag the continent from here, drop it into the label. Now, continent name is there, but confirmed cases is not there. So again, because by default it is showing first thing. So what I will do is, I will just bring the confirmed cases and drop it into the label. Now you guys are able to see country and their respective count, right? So if you see the number is large, right? So we might have to like uh, represent the numbers in the form of thousands, right? So that it is easy for users to view the data and it doesn't get uh, congested a lot. So what I will do is, there is some of confirmed cases here, right? You can click any of this. Format, right? There is a form, there is an option to format axis and pane. So axis is what you see in a line chart, the bottom. If you want to format the bottom of a chart, which is the axis, you can do it or pane, right? So in pane, this is the pane. In the pane, what I will do is, I will click the number. I will click the number custom. And then I will say decimal values, let it be zero. Display unit, let it be in thousand. So once I do that, you can see the pie chart. It is showing in thousands, right? So there are a lot of other options which you guys can do with respect to how the numbers or how the graph should appear. So all of these things are here. Right? You can change borders, you can fill colors, you can 
remove or uh, put in lines all those things are there so so this uh, uh, so this kinds of gives you the basics of how a pie chart is developed so let's rename it right uh, continents and i will probably give a better name here remember it is important to have your uh, view title as clear as possible so that uh, anyone who's looking at your view would be able to understand what it is now another part is when we when you hover over it you would be able to see the data it is showcasing right continent confirmed cases so this is called tooltip what you see here right so say i wanted to show deaths and recovery numbers also along with confirmed cases here in the tooltip alone so what i will do is deaths drag tooltip recovery drag tooltip so when you hover over it you would be able to see the deaths and recovery numbers also in the hover right okay let's move forward uh, this is done let's move to the next uh, view which is a little more advanced view and which most of the organizations are using now so let's create a map right so for map if you see there is a globe icon that is beside your country right so whenever there is a globe icon beside a field it means the the field is geocoded when i say geocoded the country is automatically taken in and latitude and longitudes for the countries it automatically generated so tableau then generates this automatically based on the country names which you have used in your data right so what will happen is for creating any map visualization latitude and longitude data is very important and is required so this is automatically generated so what i will do is i will double click country and you guys would be able to see country is automatically mapped right country is denoted here and you would be able to see country is shown here as a detail meaning in the map the level of detail is at country level and it is shown here okay now i wanted to see the confirmed cases plotted in the map right i will double click confirmed cases so when i double click confirmed cases confirmed cases automatically becomes a size right so see here you have the circle icon circle icon is nothing but size so what typically happened is the circle that was denoting country automatically changed in size when based on the confirmed cases number so if you see he smaller circle is for lesser number and larger circle is for more number but what i wanted to do is i wanted to make the visualization a little more intuitive right i want the visualization color to spread across and tell where exactly my numbers are right so what i will do is i will drag this from here and drop it into circle i'm sorry color so when i do that confirmed cases is changed from size to color right and you are able to see a neat graph that has lighter blue for lesser numbers and brighter blue for more numbers correct so now we can do the same thing i will bring the labels together right and then i i wanted to show the country name also so i will just track the country name put it in the labels again i will drag the confirmed cases and put it in the label right you are able to see it right you can you can always go in and change the numbers from uh, into thousands like what we did before which is like let me do it for you all exactly because this is important format pane let me i'm sorry let me go here i'm sorry let me go here custom right so now now what i wanted to do is we have the graph neatly laid 
right i wanted to add death and recovery to tooltip as usual drag and drop death into tooltip recovery into tooltip okay we were able to see this here now it makes more sense to give to color it as red right lighter red for lesser corona cases and darker red for more cases so what i do is you are able to see the color here click here edit color click there is a variant of red okay so you can see united states in bright red because at that point of time it was having the major number and the other countries in lighter red right so this is done so we will name this as countries map and then i will give an actual name here in countries okay so and then what we will do is we will move to uh, move to create another graph right uh, now let's concentrate on deaths and recoveries right let's create a graph that gives you death and recovery so when you click a, ge a geo coded column or field it automatically becomes a map but i just wanted to show this as a text so what i will do is drag it put it in rows right and then i wanted to look at death numbers right so i will drag death numbers and put it in my column if you see automatically it creates a graph which is the bar graph you see here horizontal bars right so i wanted to bring in recovery also let me bring and put it here right now i am able to see two graphs that shows death and recoveries let's fit this to the entire view right so a very important point is if you look at the marks it's a little different now right you are able to see all right so i just and you are able to see some of deaths if i click here you will be able to see a separate mark session for it and you are able to see recovery a separate mark session for this so what happens is when you add more level of detail to your views marks give you independent abilities to change each and every property you can see properties for recovery that could be changed uh, a dump example uh, i will just make this as a circle i will just make this as a shape or i can do anything right but obviously bar makes more sense so i can change it individually if you look at this when i change it for recovery only recovery was changing right so uh, similarly i can change color for one session alone right so all these flexibility is provided here right so but what i wanted to do is i wanted to sort it in a way that is easy for the business users to understand the maximum impacted country okay so what i will do is go the and deaths you would be able to see an option to sort click here now this view is sorted by death numbers and their appropriate recovery so i will go to all because i want a data label to be shown for both the bars i will click show data label you are able to see this and then what i will do is i would like to have color for different countries so what i will do i want country as different color so drag the country and drop it into colors right so this is colorful most of us like this some don't and in many organizations you can see like they wanted to have more subtle colors right no big variations light subtle gradients of colors right so for that case what you guys can do is edit color right go here click you should be able to see blue right these are different shades of blue assign palette you would be able to see the palette is assigned and give 
ओके वराइटीज ऑफ ब्लू मेकिंग द डैशबोर्ड अ लिटिल मोर प्रोफेशनल बट फॉर दिस प्रैक्टिस वी विल जस्ट हैव इट अस कलरफुल राइट सो once this is there this kinds of gives me gives us a detailed understanding of how the countries are with respect to their death and recovery okay so let's name this okay let me put an appropriate name what recovering numbers okay now let's create one more graph let's create uh, let's create the relationship graph which we saw before so that it it would give you an interesting perspective right so i wanted to understand the relationship between deaths and recoveries in countries right through through something like a scattered plot so what i will do is double click death double click recovery right now you are able to see what the circle represents the circle represents total deaths and total recoveries i wanted to see it for different countries right so what i will do is <clears throat> bring the country from here and put it into color right now you are able to see the country that is shown like what we see initially we are able to see how the death and recovery is related for each country right so what we will do is let's make this circle a little more intuitive what i will do is you see here it it is showing that the the graph is represented in the form of shapes right so let's play with the shape a bit i wanted to increase the size of the shape right when you you see size here click here you're able to see circle bigger right and what i wanted to do is i wanted to also color this so shape is what it is represented so click shape there is an option where it is shaded click this you are able to see a nicely shaded relationship graph between deaths and recovery right so let's make this fit to entire view and then let's name this right what is the relationship between death and recoveries okay so we have we have the graphs that is required for us to form the dashboard now i just wanted to quickly touch base on one thing simple thing though it is not used uh, in the dashboard uh, but before that let me quickly see if there is any any concern in terms of when we draw a line graph also we can be able to visible in a clean manner obviously yes we can do that and then can calculate it bills yeah that is what i'm going to address instead of circle why can't you make a line balance again you can do anything as you want right so i will um, not going into the deep of it but let me quickly show you right so uh, i i believe when you say line you might be referring to the previous graph but then you you are free to use anything you use it is not uh, it is not like you have to fit to uh, what what is shown here it is uh, the, the the beauty about tableaus you can do and create visualization in whichever way you want it and then if it is appropriately conveying you the meaning that is all it is required okay so and the other thing is line graph you use majorly when you are showing trend analysis meaning when you have x axis as time frame right may january february march april and when you are showing numbers so that is line graph is uh, used more in that cases and it is more appropriate in those cases okay okay so 
I just wanted to show you guys a glimpse of how calculated fields work here. So what you do here is the percentage death and percentage recovery which we created in Excel. If you wanted to create the same thing here, all you need to do is right click, create calculated field. I'm saying percentage deaths, right? And I will say type deaths. It will auto appear, tab, divided by confirmed cases, tab. Okay, that's all. And whenever you double click it, you would be able to see the percentage step numbers, right? For this visualization, I'm not using it because we, we, are, we are just sticking to the basics, but then this is just a glimpse of what you can do with calculated fields. There are a lot of advanced features that is available in calculated fields, which makes a lot of things possible in Tableau, right? And there is also something called parameters, which is more for the advanced sessions, but then it kind of uh, gives you a lot of flexibility in handling the data, right? So let's let's develop a dashboard. Let me click new dashboard. What you will be able to see is you will be able to see the size, uh, the sheets that we created, few objects that you can drop, and so and so. You can bring in external images. You can attach web pages. All those good stuff you can do. So what I'm going to do for the basic thing is I'm going to increase the width a bit, right? I'm going to increase the height also, right? Let me first bring in the continents. What I will do is drag the continents and drop it here. My continents are here. And then I wanted to bring in the map. I will drag it where I wanted to drop it. I wanted to drop it in the right corner, right? that particular uh, layout is highlighted so just drop it here right and then death and recovery so what i wanted to do is i wanted to do uh, bring this in the, at the bottom corner right and then relationship again in the bottom corner right now this is done and the very uh, reason that the numbers and hoverings have already giving me all the information that is showcased here, just for the sake of it, I'm going to remove this, right? Click here, remove, click here, remove. This kind of gives some extra space for you, right? And you can always make your map a little higher, a little bigger, right? Now I, I can add a dashboard title. You would be able to see show dashboard title here. Once you click that, you will get the title and let's say like, Okay, it's done, it's ready. You can play with this visualization a lot. You can, um, if you see here, there's an option to go to sheet, there's an option to use as a filter, there's an option to more option. If you click more option, if you go to the uh, filters, you can add filters, you can make this as a filter and you can do all those good stuff. And then you can also right click, format, shade this with whatever color you want if you see here worksheet is there uh, you can go in and shade some color right like this and you can do whatever formatting you think it is appropriate for your dashboard right um, all these things can be formatted there are a lot of formatting um, options that is available which i will leave it up to you guys to play around right so now the dashboard is ready and we have created this in a public version. So if you go to file, and if you try to save, there is no save option to save it in your desktop. So what you will do is, you will say, save it to public, Tableau public, right? I'm going to say, save to Tableau public because I already has a, have a version. So when I say, save to Tableau public, let me click that, it will ask the workbook title. So I'm going to say, test and save right now it is getting published to my public profile yeah this is done 
oh there is one other thing so i know like i showcase that once you click here the other graphs changes right so for this you just need to go here either click here which is use as a filter or go here and say use as a filter in either ways once you put it as a filter you would be able to see all the other graphs affected by this right okay so uh this is published now this is published in the uh, public profile and anyone would be able to view this if you just uh, copy this link and give it to any of your friends they should be able to view this so that is how the dashboard creation process and that is how the publishing process works right so what i will do you guys is i know like okay uh, let me quickly take a spot check i know like we have only half an hour left and we have sir please add filters in all uh, so i believe that the filter you asked is the filter which i just showed but uh, else also like there you know, all you need to do is just click a view add filter and it will appear at your right hand side just like the legends we saw oh okay the yes, sir that i meant okay fine uh, advanced calculations okay we are good SQL integrated, yes, SQL is integrated, but then um, uh, in, in a more advanced sessions, when you connect to the SQL server, you would be able to apply queries before you bring in the data into your views. Okay, so what I would be doing is, I know like I went in uh, in my pace, and then it is, it is not uh, feasible for some of you guys to get it installed and follow along with me. So what I will do is, uh, I will go to my public profile, so this is my public profile and then this is the actual dashboard this is the actual dashboard where i've done good amount of formatting i've changed all the colors i've highlighted the title i've done all these good stuff so what i will do is i will share this link with you guys so once you visit this link you guys will be able to download this whole tableau and you guys can play around play with it okay so so yeah that is all it is let's go back to the presentation uh, so dashboard practice and recreation this is the dashboard link oh i'm sorry i should have kind of like put, put it into the window copy chat data science with tableau is useful yes it is useful because i have used it it gives a lot of flexibility in understanding doing exploratory data analysis so uh, please please make use of this uh, uh, please make a note of this link which i just shared which has the final dashboard that we just saw so you guys would be able to download the dashboard and you guys would be able to um, play along with it if you have any concerns in downloading it let me know uh, or let excelatics know so that i can i can coordinate uh, the issues right so uh, along with this i know the session recording is something that um, excelatics will be would be publishing through youtube so you guys can follow along with that okay so this is done um, so let mo let's let's move ahead and move into the next thing right questions now is the time for questions. I will give a couple of minutes um, and see if there is any major questions that needs to be addressed. If knowledge of Excel and Tableau both important for data analysis job, mm, it depends on the team which you are going in. If it's a team that is transitioning from Excel to Tableau, both knowledge is required. If it is already transitioned, then probably more Tableau knowledge is required. Could you please share the links and required information through mail or may in YouTube description? Uh, I think that that Divya definitely will. okay yeah Divya will take care of it. Is data also exposed to public server or just visuals? Data also is exposed to public server. The reason I say so is um, still you will be able to see the underlying data right. Uh, uh, when you click a particular data point, just like what we saw before, and when you look at underlying data, it is visible to everyone. So how can I export the data into PDF format? Okay, it is just a click away. 
so i'm not sure if it is available in the public version but in the tableau version i don't think you can do it in public but in the enterprise version it is just a click away um can we make relationship between two tables when you say relationship do you mean uh joints yes you can do how long it will take to cover data analytics course data analyst course okay so that is probably a generic question which i won't be able to pinpoint now mm, so how to connect any website to tableau dash okay uh, that is an interesting topic so any website to tableau dash so when i say website you will only be able to show a website you won't be able to connect to a website so that is a more advanced topic connection to a website usually is done through uh python web scraping right so i know like uh, it's a little more advanced but if you are a data enthusiast if you are looking for um ways to extract data from a website um there is a youtube video which i've kind of published uh you can like follow my channel and you should be able to see that video which shows you end to end about how it can be done training preview course i think uh, divya uh, please and take a note of it um how long it okay okay so we are good so we are good I, i'm sorry i will have to okay couple of okay so i'm sorry i will have to cut the question short very sorry but if there is anything that you need help on you can reach out uh, i know like some of you guys have reached out uh, reached out to me through linkedin and uh, uh, you can post in your questions on my linkedin personal message and i will try my best to help you guys out so the rest uh, if there is anything concern that is related to the course you can get in touch with excelitics right so let let's let's move ahead and um, look at one more important session right what is pre attentive attributes why is there a lot of attention on this pre attentive attributes recently right so let's let, let's take a look a look at this what do you see here when you see the length width so these are basically the pre attentive attributes which we spoke about so when you look at the length width orientation size in all these cases you are able to clearly distinguish the thing that is very right so the, the thing that is different you are able to spot it immediately here 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 this one the shape this color all these things so pre attentive attribute is something that helps you make sense of a view immediately right typically what happened is what happens is we look into a data we look into a complex visualization and then our brain processes it and sends it to the attentive section right and the attentive section will help you understand the data which you are seeing in depth right so pre attentive attribute kinds of gives you the insight just out of your subconscious right so it is it is just uh once you see that you are able to understand what it is instead of instead of use you uh digesting it and then looking for the insights in the data right so how was pre attentive attributes useful in data visualization let me show you so let me show it with an example right so let's take this data let me duplicate oh sorry let me create a new one right i was looking for country i was looking for confirmed cases you have a neat graph i will just put together a form of view oh i'm sorry one second entire view now it is all jumbled it's it's in the form of graph but still it is all jumbled so what i'm doing is i'm sorting it right when you sort it and when you add a data label you are able to see clearly what are the top 3 top uh, bottom 3 and all those good steps but can we make this a little more in, a little more easy to grasp the information right one other thing which i can do is this confirmed cases i wanted to share these bars with dark blue for the countries with more confirmed cases and light blue 
for the country is for the low confirmed cases. So what I do is I press control. I drag this and I drop it into colors. Now what happens here? Here it clearly shows what we need to what we need to understand, right? It kind of gives a flavor to the dashboard and it kind of attracts me directly to the point what I wanted to convey. So this is one of the application of pre-attentive processing, which is this color hue. So I'm able to clearly differentiate, right? What needs to be highlighted. Let's look at another thing, right? What will happen if I drag the confirmed cases from color and drop it into size? This is even more intuitive, right? United States, the bar is highlighted to big extent because it has high cases and then you can see the other cases, the bar's size is decreasing, right? So this is again an application of pre-attentive attributes, which is this. With like this, we can use the pre-attentive signs to make our visualization attractive and also at the same time, people who come into your date, uh, dashboard could be able to make sense of it in just a couple of seconds, right? So that is the importance of pre-attentive attributes and throughout in the advanced training course, all we will be using is creating visualization considering these techniques, right? So that is all I had with respect to uh, this. And then let's quickly look at what would be the next steps. So the next step is for guys who wanted to get trained, right? Why do you want to get trained? Because there is a lot of difference between knowing Tableau and mastering the tool, right? You can, you can do a couple of browsings and you can probably, if, I, if you look at my uh, video, you can create a basic, basic visualization. And then, yeah, you know Tableau, you know to visualize Tableau. But then it is completely different from mastering the tool. The reason I say so is what we looked at is already cleaned data that is used in visualization. But it is not the ideal world we have in our organizations. And it, in a non-ideal world, there are a lot of challenges you guys need to address while performing a tablet visualization. So that is the reason you guys should get trained. And then the confidence, right? When I say confidence, confidence is not only about creating a dashboard. Yes, I know to create a dashboard. Is that confidence enough to flourish in this career path or to make things work in this? It could be, but then when an organization gives you a challenge, right? You should know the right approach and right thing to do to take up that challenge, right? I, I might have known to create bar graphs, maps, dashboards in Tableau, but then when, an, when a business user comes and tells me, hey, this is the problem which I'm facing, or this is the question which I wanted to address. Can you help me visualize this with Tableau? You should be able to, un, uh, understand what is the approach in it, right? So that is why you need to get trained. And then the course which we have designed is in line with the requirements, meaning uh, the subject areas that needs to be expertized for Tableau certification. So uh, the content which we have will cover the things that needs to be expertized for you to go away and uh, look for a Tableau certification right, and then analytics. So analytics is a blooming industry, right? All of us hear a lot of news about how analytics is going to change the world in the next few years. We know like how analytics is being a part and parcel of everyone's uh, business uh, today. So all these things are through analytics. So if you wanted to move into analytics, Tableau is one of the important skills you need to get yourself familiarized, trained, and added to your build, right? Because it gives a lot of ability to you to perform the initial data exploration. People who wanted to go into data science, 
people who already know Python, they also need to understand Tableau. They, they, they can use Tableau to the extent that they can create initial data analysis, which will help them in their exploratory data analysis. Right, so that is the reasons uh, you need to get trained. And then why Excelitics, right? Here in Excelitics, what we typically do is we are a set of professionals who have done the solutioning for business before. We have gone through all the learning curve. We have done all the mistakes which needs to be done for you to go through the learning curve and we have learned from them, right? So we wanted to bridge that gap for you and we wanted to teach what we do and what we did for you to go through the learning curve in a much more easier way, right? And make learning exciting. When I say exciting, the real problems, think about this, right? So we, we were creating a graph. Uh, it's the COVID cases. So most of us could be a little more interested to see like what the data shows, even if it is old data. So we will give all these real time kind of experience and make learning exciting, right? And then team of experts. Yeah, we have team of experts into different domains, which who can help you guys in different aspects of data analytics and real world projects. We will be using projects that is used in real world rather than using projects that is already set. And then feedback. We have a lot of good feedback that is uh, given to us through Google from the previous uh, people who trained with us. So, so that is the reason you could choose Excelitics, right? So the below is the contact details, the address, um, the email, you guys can note this. I think even Dibia will reach out to you guys on this. So uh, and um, you can reach out to us in case of any questions. There's a website you can look into contents and all those things. And uh, um, Excelitics is also out there in Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, WhatsApp. There is also a YouTube channel which you guys could subscribe. So all those good things are there. So um, you can subscribe to us and then and then please let me uh, know like I know like some of the guys have connected through LinkedIn so let uh, please drop in a message if there's any questions or you wanted to understand how to go about your career in data science data analytics business intelligence I would be happy to help so that's all I had uh, thank you very much for your time I know like it is it is it is an overwhelming session thank you very much for your attention so um, let me know like uh, uh, if you guys need any help. I will just quickly go through some of the questions just to answer you and clear doubts if there is any, right? Uh, is certification mandatory? I don't think so. So if you are a kind of person who wants to understand all the um, things that is out there in the market, Tableau, then uh, uh, you learn Tableau, you flourish in an organization for three, four years, and then you want to move ahead with another tool. You don't need the certifications. But then uh, there are a lot of companies which takes care of certification, which, which consider certification more value. So let me stop the recording.